Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the demo today. For most developers out there, if you think about code, you're going to think about GitHub. Now today we're going to be looking at a company that is promising to be the GitHub, not for code, but for machine learning and for machine learning models. The demo for today we're going to look at is Hugging Face, huggingface.co. Hugging Face is the AI community for building the future. Just a little bit about Hugging Face before we dive in. And the company was started in about 2016, really focusing on NLP. Ever since you can see by the number of uh, likes and stars they have on GitHub, it's really growing into a big community. If you work with AI ML in any capacity, sooner or later you're going to run into Hugging Face or you're going to want to know about Hugging Face. Hugging Face has a wide library of models and transformers that have been downloaded millions of times. So it's a platform and a community worth knowing. In today's demo, we're going to go in, we're going to look at the UI side of Hugging Face. What are some of the capabilities that are available? Then we're going to switch over into Python and look at some code on how to interact leveraging models in Hugging Face to do natural language processing, be it uh, image classification, translation, audio classification, summarization, Q&A, zero shot classification, and much more. So that said, let's dive right in into the UI. The very first thing you're going to want to do is to log in. Once you log in, there are going to be several options to see. There are models, which is going to be our big focus for today. Data sets, which you can download and use for your own training if you need to. There are spaces for collaboration as well as documentation. So let's go in, into the models. So here you see models for from the bird family and the different tasks the models can perform. So image classification or sentiment analysis, so sentence similarity, all of those models are available, be it from birds, Roberta, robustly optimized birds, Albert, which is a lightweight bird, or Roberta Lash. Deep set, you name it. So let's take, for example, we're looking for image classification. You can see the different models, and these are all pre trained models you can directly use for image classification. Or if we go back and pick on BERT, it does give you good documentation in terms of uh, what this model is about, how to use it. If you're going to use this in your Python code, I'm going to see an example of how to use that and a whole lot of documentation. Uh, on the right side, they'll have an endpoint for inference. For example, this bird model, which is a unknown case model, you can put in your text. Paris is the, and this text is what it should fill in the blank for, of francs. So you go ahead and compute this. So Paris is the capital of francs. You can say New York, for example, is known for leave it the blank and this inference model would fill in the blank so new york is known for tourism it has uh, the confidence over there if you're looking at specific data sets so maybe you're going to train your own models and you want the data sets use here you see the library of data sets that are available there's blimp there's glue super glue wiki text and you can actually download these data sets and use. I'm going to show how to access that from within Python. And there are spaces here for collaboration. Thinking about that Git type experience, they're looking at bringing that here within the model development and the AI, especially for NLP space. There is pricing around this. For the most part, it's free to use the models. A lot of the models are open source, but there is also uh, pay as you go plans if you're going to uh, perform certain tasks. So I'll encourage you if you're going to be using this for commercial purposes to look at the different plans and the options that are available. So let's go back and see how we can take one of these models and work with that within a Python environment to interact with that model. Go into models, search for a model to help with text summarization. So on the left side here, you can see the different tasks 
for the model. So if you click on text summarization, it's going to give us the list of models and that have been pre-trained for text summarization. Pick the top one. And so these are by, by likes or by stars and by the number of downloads. Let's start with the Facebook bird last CNN example. It does give you what it does, the languages that are available. It's a transformer, it's in English, and there's a lot of details. The licensing here is the MIT license. On the right side, you can use the hosted inference API. We're going to be doing some summarization. If you put in some text, which is the raw text here, the inference API is going to summarize that for you. And so that's a summarization. Now, if you go back, there is also sample code on how to leverage this within your Python environment. So if you're working with Python and you want to leverage this, there is a sample code for that. Let's switch over to our Python to see how starting from scratch, we can go ahead and set up an environment to interact with the models from Hugging Face. The very first thing you want to do, typically I use Conda to manage my environment. We're going to go ahead and create a new environment with Conda, call it demo. Hugging face. I'm gonna use Python 3.9. That's fine. And now we have our environment created. While the environment creates, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. Call it. Now we have a Python environment and we have a blank script ready for us to use. So let's zoom in. The very first thing we're gonna wanna do is to select our interpreter. From this, we're gonna pick the virtual environment we just created, which we called demo hugging face. With that environment created, we can go ahead and simply, it's really that easy, copy this code and paste that uh, in shit. So we're gonna grab the pipeline and we're just gonna do summarization. The task we're gonna be doing within the pipeline is summarization. Because we have a specified model, is going to use the default model that Hugging Face decides. You'll see that in the example. So here's the text we want to summarize. The line below, we're simply going to print summarize, summarizer, which we uh, instantiated above, give it the article, the max length we want to summarize, the mean length, and then do sample force. If I run this, it's going to give an issue because we don't have that. But let's go ahead. And I just run this just to see when it complains because it doesn't like that. All right. This is no surprise. And if I zoom in, you can see it says no module named transformer. The way we're going to fix that, of course, is because we are within the demo hugging face of virtual environment. What I'm going to do now is maybe use pip. When I use pip install, if you like pip or if you want conda, you can also do conda as well. So I'm going to do pip install pipeline. And so it's going to go ahead and install pipeline for me. Next thing I'm going to do is pip install transformers. And the installation is going. It takes a few seconds and we should have that installed. All right. The transformers have been uh, installed. We've now got this uh, resolved. So let's run this again one more time. After running this, it didn't like it. Uh, it says PyTorch uh, isn't installed. So we're going to have to go ahead and install PyTorch now because I use Conda. I'm going to install PyTorch from Conda. So you can either install TensorFlow or you can install PyTorch depending on which one you prefer. For this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use PyTorch. Do Conda, install, specify the channel, PyTorch. PyTorch. Should take a few seconds and that should be installed. Say yes. It took a few seconds and PyTorch is now installed. Go back. We can run this uh, script and this should be successful now. All right. The code runs successfully. It does give us a result, but there was a couple of warnings. The very first one, it says no model was supplied and it defaulted to using this model. Which model is that? This model is not the Facebook model, which we're working with. It's this one. 
the 1216 from Chilifer. If you don't want to use that, then you can have to specify the model. And you can also specify the revision that you want. It's really easy to do. By using a pipeline without specifying the model name and the revision in production is not recommended. Just go to one in the state. Now we give it a text. Here is a summarized output coming in, in this list, really easy to do. So if you go back and we want to fix this because we did the model without supplying the model name, but to specify the model name, all we have to do is copy the model name from here. So you can type it in. You can just simply copy that. Now we have the model name. And if we go back here, we can add this parameter to say model we want equals give it the model name. Now we have the specific model name we want. And if you also want, there are specific revisions that you can also give. And here you can see the parameters that you can put in. So there is model, which can either be any, and then there are configs that you can also specify. So let's run this now with that uh, model specified. There you have it. That was pretty quick and it came up with the summarization for us. So it's that easy to go in into hugging face. Think about it like a library full of books and you can go in and check in, check out the book you want to use for your use case. Hugging face is really positioning itself as a library full of pre-trained models. And instead of you training the models from scratch, you can come in here, grab the models you want, and you can use that. Now, there are ways to not just use the raw pre-trained models. You can fine tune the models themselves. In a future video, I'm going to go in on how to use some of these pre-trained models and then fine tune them for your specific need or for your specific use case or your specific data set. Uh, before we wrap up, the last thing I want to show is the data sets. In addition to using the models that are available, you can also grab data sets to use for training or for inference or whatever the use case is. To do that, again, if we go back into Python, all we have to do in this case is to import from data sets, which can now start working with a data set. So for example, well, it doesn't like this. Of course, if it doesn't like that, let's do one more thing here. Let's go in and do pip install data sets. If this is a resolving for you, of course, PIP is going to install that for you. If you prefer Anaconda, you can also do the same. Now, while that's installing or resolving there, we're going to do data set files. You can specify the file you want to use. So for example, this is where you just have to be careful a little bit, depending on the size of the files you're working with. For some reason, the blimp file seems to be very uh, popular. Blimp is a challenge set for evaluating a language model phenomena. Let's say we wanted this again, we can go in here. We can grab that data set name. If we go back, all we have to do is throw in the data set. Just like that, we can grab that data set file. And if you want to see the head of that, you can do print data. And let's go ahead and run that. This may take a few seconds because of course we're working with the large data set. Let's play this so you can see the result of this running. The very first time it's going to download the data set. So it's downloaded that and the first record is B. So let's do one. I don't want to print everything coming from that file. It might be too big of a data set. All right, so one, two, three, is, uh, you can see that there is data do, uh, coming back and it's going into my downloads folder. But this is how you can grab data sets if you want to use them for, for training. There is a, a rich library of uh, data sets that are available. Here you can see subsets of the, of the data sets and you can use them. So it's a very fascinating platform, Hugging Face. In future videos, I'm going to show how to fine-tuned models that you might get from here. I'm a big fan of the bird model family and even open AI as well. But I think Hugging Face has a little bit of its own niche. So I'm going to sh uh, show how to fine-tune models 
I'm also going to look at showing how to leverage hugging face models in Snowflake Snowpack. For those that are working on Snowflake, you want to use these models in your data warehouse. It's also possible to do it. These are open source models. If you want to grab that, bring that into Snowflake Snowpack's Python engine and run that to do inference or to do summarization, it's very possible to do that. So let me know in the comment section below what you like me to make a video about based on what you've seen. And I'll be more than happy to, to do so. But hopefully this has been helpful giving a quick introduction into Hugging Face. It's a very exciting um, platform, very well capitalized. I think about two or so billion uh, very recently in their rounds. So ML AI has a lot of promise. And I think this company is uh, really positioning is, itself right there in the middle for people developing models finding models and collaborating on that. Do check it out as always. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any topics you want me to talk about or, or interesting people you want me to interview, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. This has been through. You've been awesome. I'll see you in the next demo.